Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and I'm here with the 12.20 mid-patch update. We'll be going over updated tier lists for all 5 roles and follow up on balance changes from the patch. But before we jump into things, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos like this are a great way to give you guys a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24-7 just waiting to share everything that they know with you. So stop struggling alone and head over for some professional help now. Now let's get onto this tier list. First, we'll start with the top laners. We're moving Quinn down to the S tier for this patch. Her performance has fallen off a bit, but it's also worth noting that she's not a super popular champion. So her low play rate could be kind of a fluke. Either way, she's still a really reliable champion for climbing the ladder. Olaf also moves down to the S tier. Again, it could also be a fluke, but he's still a reliable pick that can easily snowball to a win if you get an early lead. One tip for Olaf is to stick to split pushing if you want to get the most control over your win. Olaf is way better at dueling a 1 on 1 or even taking a 1v2 rather than just charging into 5 champions where you'll usually be blown up before you can even get much done. We thought Pantheon would hurt more by the Eclipse nerf this patch, but he's been performing pretty much exactly the same, so we're bumping him back up to the S tier. The thing is, Pantheon is just so dominant in the early game that you're usually going to snowball before you even have Eclipse. In our patch rundown, we mentioned that Wukong's ults buff this patch may not be enough to warrant him being moved up to the tier list, and it seems like we were right. So we're moving him back down to the B tier. The thing is, the ult buff was definitely really good, but his issue has never been a weak ultimate. If anything, it's probably the best part of his kit. He's an absolute monster in mid to late game team fights. The big issue is getting there. After being an absolute monster for a good chunk of the season, right nerfed Wu to the point that he's just so mediocre, his strong team fighting doesn't really mean much. We'll be moving Jace up to the B tier. The buff that he got this patch was really good, and in the right hands, it's safe to say that he's maybe even OP tier. But in the right hands means when he's being played perfectly, like you'd see in super high elo or even pro games. In mid-level solo queue, Jace isn't all that reliable. You just need to understand how to properly combo with him to get good trades in. If you slip up, he's really prone to dying to an all-in. But even if you're able to perfectly trade with your foe, there's an even bigger issue to worry about, the enemy jungler. If you aren't careful, it's super easy to passively shove in the minion wave as you trade with Jace. This leaves you open to ganks, and once you die to even just one gank, you'll lose all your pressure that you had built up, and you often end up being rolled again and again. You need super high level wave management and preferably a jungler that will play around you most of the game, but neither of those are just too likely to happen in gold or plat solo queue. Fiora moves down to the B tier. While she may be one of the hot picks in pro play, when it comes to solo queue, she's just not doing that well. Too many of the meta picks bully her hard early if you don't have a super clean play, and like with Jace, I don't mean good by plat standards. You just need to have insane mechanics to really get consistent results with her. Kale has found it harder and harder to scale up in the top lane, so we're moving her to the B tier. Unless you have a super free lane, locking her in usually just means coin flipping on making it to the late game without the game being over. We'll be bringing Trinomare up to the B tier. A lot of picks that end up here are just really mediocre or just super situational, and he falls into the latter option. If you can get a good matchup with Trinomare, you can easily take over the game by permasplitting to win. But if you end up in a bad one and end up behind, you're just useless for the rest of the game, since it's not like you have any utility to fall back on. Now, finally moving to the jungle, here's our list. In the patch rundown, we talked about how we weren't really too sure on where Ramus would end up. In case you missed it, he was basically bugged last patch. Riot changed how his W was calculated, and it resulted in an unintended nerf that caused him to drop off really hard. We weren't entirely unsure about how these new buffs this patch would affect things, so we didn't even bother moving him on the rundown. Now that we actually have enough info to go off of, we can safely say that the buffs did in fact help quite a bit, so we'll be placing him in the S tier. We really expected Maokai Jungle to be affected pretty badly by his nerfs, but you can barely even tell that he got any. He's still one of the highest performing junglers, so we're moving him up to the S tier for now. After what feels like years of permanently being in the top 2 tiers, Ulrich has finally dropped off a bit, so we're moving him down to the A tier. He's still a super easy to play champion that can always have a decent impact on the game, but he's just not bringing as much to the table as higher tiered picks right now. We were super hopeful that Eve would be super strong after the buffs that she got this patch, and in Diamond Plus, she is, with over a 53% win rate. But in the middle elos that we direct this video at, she's sitting at about a 51%. That's definitely not bad, but not quite enough to be in the S tier, so we're moving her down to the A. Dr. Mundo was doing pretty well in the jungle out of nowhere, so we had him in the S tier, but now, just as quickly as he popped up, he's fallen off again, so we're moving him down to the A tier. This is another pick with a pretty small sample size, so it's hard to say whether it's accurate or just a fluke. But one thing that is for certain is that Mundo Top is really strong right now, so if you just have to play him, take him to the role where he does better anyway. We're moving Lilia down to the B tier. She falls into our mediocre category of B tier picks. While meh is better than terrible, she's also worse than good, so I can't really think of a time where I'd ever want to lock her in over stronger AP options. Fiddle 6 is way better if you want a scaling champion that can actually solo carry games. Diana is somehow a tank assassin bruiser hybrid, and at least gives you an option for playing super high tempo and closing out a game fast. 
Talon moves down to the C tier. He was already super feast for famine before 12.19, and after that Eclipse nerf, he tilted more towards the famine side of things. Again, just another champion where the options fill the same niche, but much better. We'll be moving Avern up to the C tier. I usually say this once per video, but remember, moving a champion from the D to the C tier means that the champion is still pretty bad, just not quite as bad as before. Ivern is just way too lacking in the early game impact, and what he brings to the table later doesn't really make up for it. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. Trisana is pretty much always a good mid laner, but she's been doing even better than usual lately, so we're gonna go ahead and move her up to the OP tier. It's kinda crazy how often you can get early kills with her. I mean, her damage is nuts, but it's not like she's new. You'd think people would expect it by now. Zed has also seen a spike in success lately, so we're moving him up to the S tier as well. It's definitely important to pay attention to the enemy team comp when playing Zed. Good Zed players often swap between Conqueror and Electrocute, as well as Prowlers and Duskblade, so learning what's right for the different situations can definitely be a big make or break factor for your games. Fizz is continuing to do really well after his buff last patch, so we're moving him up to the S tier. Honestly, the only thing preventing him from being completely OP is how beefy the meta champs in the top and jungle are. If squishier champions were being played in those roles, Fizz would probably be just unstoppable in 9 out of 10 games. Victor gets demoted to the A tier. He's definitely still a decently safe scaling pick, but a lot of the other picks in the S and OP tiers are just overall way more consistent at carrying games. They either come online sooner or spike harder in the mid game. We'll be moving Syndra up to the B tier for now. Statistically, she's pretty meh, with about a 50% win rate at most levels of play. But if you get good enough at her to be able to survive the early game, her scaling is absolutely nuts. If you could somehow make it to the late game every game, she would easily be S or OP tier. But since it seems like a lot of people aren't quite doing that, we just can't put her any higher right now. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. We'll be moving Trisana up to the OP tier. She requires quite a bit more effort than Misfortune, and is therefore a bit more riskier of a pick, but that definitely comes with a higher capacity for carrying games. So if you're willing to put in the work, you should definitely pick her up. Rather than win the lane through short bursty traits like MF, with Trisana, when it's time to fight, you usually go all in. Trisana is by far one of the most snowbally champions in the game. She can turn an inch into a mile, very easily running away with the entire game if you can get an early kill. It's worth noting that she's especially good to play if you're duoing with your support, since it definitely helps have communication for those all-ins. Elo drops down to the S tier. This move is mostly just being made due to how many champions we have in the OP tier versus how many are in the S tier. She could pretty much still be considered the weakest champion in the OP tier, but it just gives a bit better sense of scale and balances things out a bit to move her down a notch. Finally, we have our supports. We'll be moving Blitzcrank right back up to the OP tier. It was pretty difficult to tell how this patch was going to affect Blitzcrank with all the changes that we were initially given, and then Riot decided to actually pull like half of those changes. The sat nerves and slightly lower damage on his E still aren't enough to counter how broken his W's on hit damage is, and I think it's pretty safe to say that he's probably still overall the best support in the game. Honestly, rather than nerfing Blitzcrank, what they really need to do to stop him from being so strong is just to fix the bot lane meta. It's been Enchanter and Hyper Carry dominated for way too long. Those chaps being good means that Blitzcrank is naturally good, since he counters them. If more tanks were strong down there, there would be better answers. Malkai was surprisingly pretty much unaffected by the nerfs this patch, though I guess in hindsight it kinda makes sense. The nerf to his passive healing and later ultimate cooldown doesn't really add up to much in the grand scheme of things. There's just a lot more to him than that. His point and click CC gives you a way to flash lock down targets for game winning picks. His saplings give bush control in the lane and a lot of information later on when you spam them in the enemy jungle. And he's by far one of the most disruptive team fighting champions in the game. After his recent buffs, Twitch has become a pretty strong pick as a support, so we're adding him back to the list as an A tier pick. And if you want to master Twitch, you kind of have to play like a rat and look for those cheesy picks. You can help pressure other lanes when your jungler is more of a passive champion or just doesn't have a clue on how to actually path to gank. He also scales insanely well. In fact, I'd say that he's basically just as much of a hyper carry as he would be if he was the one taking farm. Aside from doing insanely high damage, remember that his W slows and also scales with AP, making it really annoying for the enemy champions to walk through. It may not be considered hard CC, but when a slow reaches over 80%, it may as well just be a root. And that about wraps things up for our 12.20 mid-patch update. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on where the champions fall into the tier list in the comment section below. Also, check out our description for a link to join our Discord community. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.